approach to my work is really Filipino. Um, I, I studied in the States, fashion design in New York. And you grew up in the I grew up in the States, yeah. And then came back to the Philippines to rediscover my roots, so to speak. When was this? Uh, 93. 92, 93. And then um, I fortunately found Patista Soro, met Patista Soro, and through her and the Katutubo Filipino Foundations, that's when my discovery started. I uh, learned the piña, the cordillera weaves, Mindanao weaves, Tinala, Binacol. So, yeah, I mean, from then on, it really grew, and also being in a very multicultural city like San Francisco, I also got some grants uh, from the California Arts Council, and also uh, have worked with Phil Philam groups, uh, with consulate with the consulate there as well, and then um, recently I'm also working with the New York consulate and uh, possibly Shanghai, possibly other places that. The, the hope really is to uh, present something that's very international looking and then take it to the world. Have you had uh, previous um, projects before? Yes. In, in the um, well, definitely I've been doing shows in the United States, San Francisco in particular. And then I've done a project with the Asian Art Museum in San Francisco. And then after that, I did uh, two shows in New York with the with the consulate there, and then the most three most recent is 2008. I did Miss Earth here in the Philippines. I dressed the top eight, uh, and then 2009 I um, did the ASEAN Ministers, uh, the, the OST. And, uh, celebrated its 50th anniversary, so I dressed the top ASEAN ministers, the president, GMA, at that time, and PG, PGMA, and uh, the secretary of the Department of Science. Uh, I'll be doing a show in New York again this September. And uh, yeah, and then hopefully the Middle East. And th there are definitely plans of other places, and other also other cities in, in the United States. How how easy or how hard is it to access indigenous fabrics? Well, at the moment, um, when you say easy, I think it's easy enough. You know? But it's I do something different. I just don't buy off the market. I design it from the fiber. So again, you design it from the fiber from scratch. Okay. Yeah, so it's the the textiles that I use for my fashions are not that easily accessible. There is the Philippine Textile Research Institute. Uh, I need their intervention. I need interventions of communities that really uh, have work. I, the main focus really is people who have. Uh, have export uh, experience because this is about one of a kind, high end. So they have to be aware of quality. They have to be aware of deadlines. They have to be aware of. Do we have that? Yes. I mean, how how huge handful, is that? handful. A handful. Yeah. Um, what, what are these? Are these small cooperatives or are these yes main small small cooperatives? Small cooperatives. And there, do you do the? Organizing, or do you no, just no, no. access? No, I work with the organizers. Or yeah, because it'd be it'd be very hard for me to do the organizing in mean, the United States. The way you know uh, for the future show is that I'm working also with um, I don't know their hopeful name, but they're timber, non-timber. I'll show you. I'll give you the. Uh, so how consistent is quality and quantity from from the small exporters? I'm very happy with the output, but it, it's really about really uh, working with them intensely. It's not just you design, you fly away, and then you come back. It's, it's really, you have to really work with them. Uh, I think it's like hand holding. So, has there been changes? Of, you know, you, you have the design, obviously, you know the raw material. Right. Has there been changes in the way they actually 
do the textile of because of what you of thought of? Because of my inputs. Like what? Like how? Um, well, the new things that we're doing with Pina Seda right now is we're softening it, we're making it non itchy. Um, I, like I said, I've, I, I've done two shows in New York and I've worked, uh, I've, I, was, I had the privilege of working or uh, speaking with uh, textile uh, people there. And these are the feedback that they would, they would like it not more less itchy and softer and then wider. And so, yeah, there are a few things that uh, we're in innovating with these fabrics. Okay, so, in a world of you know globalized trade and all that, right. you think there's a place for niche indigenous of course, fabrics? Absolutely, absolutely. I can only talk about the high end market. Yes, of, of course. I mean, Americans, Europeans, even Asians, I believe. Um, when you're talking high end, like right. how high end are your? Stuff? We're talking about a thousand, two thousand to ten thousand dollars per dress. Per outfit, yes. So uh, it's very high end, and I think that's the way to approach this. Because if you're going to compete in the market, in the world market, China, India, these are two countries that will already have dominated the low end market. How will you compete with that? You cannot compete on the low end. You have to compete on the high end. Quality, uh, aesthetics. In terms distinctive of work, distinctive, yes. In terms of you know, in terms of how competitive you are, we usually get um, complaints about consistency. Right. Like you know, suddenly they can't make the quantity right. promise and all right. that. Well, so, so that's exactly what it is. I think. Um, it's educating the customer that you can't have quantity when you're doing high-end. When you order from Lesage in, in uh, Paris, you're not going to tell them we want a thousand yards. They're not going to produce, well, they can produce a thousand yards for you, but they will not also, they will also give you a time that they can do it because that pays them by hand. So it's the same idea. You need one of a kind only for a selected few. That's, that's how I believe we should enter the market. So that's one of a kind in terms of clothes, okay? You do the design. Right. So where do they, it's that an atelier? Do, do they, or do you go to some expensive um, chain where you No, no, at stuff? the moment I do custom made things. The, the next thing would hopefully be at Burger Goodman in New York, hopefully other, other retail, high-end retail stores. Yes, so that, that would be the next step because this, right now I'm doing one of the kind things and I have a few customers that are... In, in, in the last two years, uh, like how many um, customers would be interested in, in stuff with Philippine um, families? Um, right now, uh, because I've been doing a lot of work in the Philippines, I haven't been really marketing in the States as much, but definitely... Um, the way, the way it's working right now is that I'm doing R&D right now. Oh, okay. So, there are a few organizations that have uh, paid me to do R&D. But, um, as, it, uh, as I did a show last year in New York, there is definitely an interest. So, I don't want to go to the market and not be ready. Yeah, okay. So, what, what groups um, want you to do R&D? That's very interesting. Um, certain private sector. I also work with government. Um, Which got our government? Yes. Okay, so this would be DOST or some other or DOST trade? under PTRI under DOST. Um, possibly I'll also be working with a few people with DTI. So, so but I mean that's that that's not the whole. Yeah. I'm saying that's at least one fourth of who I work with. Yeah. As a whole, um, there are shall we say business people? that want me to do things in Middle East, Dubai, uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, and then definitely New York. So there are business people on that end that's also supporting me. But, but you're, you're pretty clear that it's not just textile. It needs your input for oh, the fashion. Oh, absolutely. Thing. Yeah. No, and I think it's, it's really clear that, um, well, I've been doing this in San Francisco for a while now. So, um, people have shown financial uh, interest. I mean, showed their interest through financial support. How many local groups are you working with? Well, uh, for now, uh, it's just a handful, but for the next year, we're looking at really. Like, more. what's a handful? Five. 
Five groups. How many people, more or less, are involved in those groups? Um, well, when you say like the cooperatives, are we talking about right? Um, I would say in a cooperative, I would only work with six or seven in each cooperative because again, it's very specialized. Not not everybody in the cooperative can work. They have to reach a certain level of proficiency when it comes to their uh, artis artistry. What are the demographics of that? Because, you know, the main fear really is that our old arts are dying out. Yes. So what, what are the demographics of the people you work with? Well, at the moment, um, I, I would say I would say that they're in their 30s and up to 50s, I suppose. But uh, the idea is to get pique that interest, and then when you create the demand for it, then hopefully the, the, the younger kids would want to. But again, it's about, I think it's not forcing the thing, it's looking for raw talent, looking for the, the next generation who has the talent. You, you must look for the talent. So there is some passing down of uh, yes. indigenous craft? I, I suppose, I suppose. But again, um, Again, the hope is when you create the demand, then you then you will implement that because it has to move forward. Okay, geographically, where are these cooperatives? Well, definitely right now it's Caribo that I'm working with. For the Pina. For the Pina and the Pina Seda. Um, I've been also working with a few people in uh, Accra, but for uh, for this show. It, it was. It just was Calibo, and then embroidery in Lumban, Laguna. Okay. 